Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Eileen in Toronto. This Mass is offered in memory of her sisters, Margaret Monaghan and Rita Kennedy, and in thanksgiving for their parents and family members who have gone before them. All were strong witnesses of their faith testaments to the Lord's loving care, guidance, and grace all the days of their lives. May they and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And some of the family are here with us today, and we welcome all of you to St. Basil's. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate ourselves for the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together we all say, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man, lame from birth, was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And the man fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, the man stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other along while you walk along? Jesus stood still, looking, excuse me, they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered them, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, These things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be commanded to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. 
but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart, to believe that all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things, and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village which where they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. The two disciples said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. These were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples told what had happened on the road, and how the Lord had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel is one of the better known in all of Scripture, the journey to Emmaus from Jerusalem. And it contains an important message for all of us as we bask in the Easter glory, namely, the need to share the good news, not just for the sake of others but for our own sake as well. Pope Paul VI once stated, It would be very useful if every Christian and every evangelizer were to pray about the following thoughts. Through God's mercy, people can gain salvation in other ways besides our preaching the gospel to them. But as for us, can we gain salvation if through negligence, fear, shame, what St. Paul called the shrinking of the gospel, or shrinking from the gospel, or as a result of false ideas, we fail to preach it. Like the disciples, we too are journeying through life, trying to recognize the presence of God in our everyday routines. Like the disciples, we continually learn about Christ's death and resurrection and what it means for us. Like the disciples, we are invited to hear the scriptures come to life and break the bread so that we may see the very presence of God and feel our hearts burning within us. And like the disciples, Jesus often first appears as a stranger to us. Only in time do we understand who God really is. And only in time do we recognize that while we may not recognize him along the way, God was present all along. Just a few days ago, the church received many more into our family, men and women who had been journeying for the past year, preparing for their first Eucharistic experience at the Easter Vigil. What a joy it is for so many of us to journey with them, to see their hearts fill with joy as they break the bread of Christ with each of us. Certainly it's easy to see their hearts on fire. Perhaps, maybe, the warmth that they have will spill over into our own. My prayer is that their gifts to us is the joy that is found in the newness of the gospel, that we may rediscover the joy and strip away the cynicism that can slowly creep into our spiritual lives. Just as the two found the eleven, so our brothers and sisters find us. Indeed, there are many who have journeyed to our local parishes during the Easter time who may also return year after year or maybe even week after week. And if they do, what will they find our hearts like? Will they find our hearts still on fire with the Easter glory, with the Easter glory? Or does life quickly go back to normal as we continue along our way? We have to ask ourselves that now that Easter is here, what impact has our Lenten observance made as we fulfill the obligations that were once self-imposed? How do we keep 
the warmth of Easter glory alive? How do we fend off the doubts that dim our hope and confidence in the resurrection of our own brokenness? At the center of today's gospel is a journey, and it's important to remember that this journey is not just along a road, but the journey of faith that we must all make. It takes time for hope to thrive in us. It takes time for our belief to move from our heart to our head, to move from the desire and want to believe to an understanding about what this means for each of us individually. The journey is not perfect. The disciples themselves demonstrate that sharing the good news can have missteps. Read the story again and you'll hear how they spoke of their frustration and their hopelessness at the very beginning. Christ was dead to them. Only when they entered into dialogue with the stranger did they find the living Christ. And so you will see that sharing the story is not just what it may do for others, but equally so what it may do for us. May we always have the courage to speak of Jesus as the reason for our hope. But as the scriptures say, may we do so with gentleness and reverence. And so as we continue to journey along the way, we bring our needs to the Father. As we pray for the church, that it may see Jesus in the poor and brokenhearted of our world and become a bold advocate for their needs, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That those responsible for setting budget priorities will see the importance of developing economic opportunities and educational training for those who are most poor in our society, we pray. That those in our midst who despair and do not see how their lives can be improved will find hope and encouragement through the support and caring of our parishes and, and cities, we pray. That each of us may discover how to walk closely with Jesus through the reception of the Eucharist and serving others, we pray. And that all who have died may continue to walk with Jesus in the heavenly kingdom, we pray. Heavenly Father, open our minds and hearts that we might feel the presence of your Son and do your will as we walk on our faith journey through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish it in us, the salvation of mind and body, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time, above all, to laud you more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, 
every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And peace Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. peace be Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy that you should be done. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that with reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son, may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the Lord bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our thanks to Eileen from Toronto, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick, and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy